welcome. Hi, Mackenzie. It's so nice to virtually meet you. I love that we could see each other to have this conversation, and I really appreciate you taking the time to, to talk with me today. Oh my goodness, it's my pleasure. I'm so excited. <laughs> I'm really excited you're able to join me today and talk about all things Good Witch, everything under the sun. Um, but before we get started with that, um, I know it's a loaded question, but can you briefly kind of tell the audience a little bit about yourself and kind of how you got started in this industry? Ooh, okay. So my name is Kiana Teresa, and I have been full-time professionally acting for almost five years now. And I wanted to get into acting when I was young. And I just don't know that I had the confidence to really think it was a real possibility for me. And so instead, I kind of went in the modeling direction. Mm. And that was fun for a while. Um, but then I just got this feeling that I needed to do something more creative, something more collaborative that I could put myself into. And it took me a few years. Uh, I went to, you know, I went throughout high school, college, university, and then in my adult life, I was like, you know what? I'm not getting any younger. Let's just do this. You know what I mean? We have one life to live. What's the yeah, worst yeah. that could happen? So yeah. I just went in head first and um, I haven't looked back since. It's been incredible. That's amazing. <laughs> and obviously I love, you know, the behind the scenes happenings of kind of how things come to be and how you go from kind of point A to point uh, B. Um, you know, what was the audition process like for Good Witch? Was it something that happened pretty quickly? Was it a long process? Like kind of talk a little bit about, you know, how it came to be. Yeah, it was actually a pretty interesting process. So originally I had auditioned for a different role, a different character um, that showed up earlier in the season. And I got some feedback from casting and they said, hey, we really liked your audition. However, there's this character that isn't written yet, doesn't exist yet, but we really like you for her. So would can you hold off and wait until we're still writing it? Um, would you mind waiting and then auditioning for that character when she exists? And I was like, okay. And they said, you know, it's, it's a bit of a longer story arc. It's a love interest to one of the season regulars. And are you interested? Like, of course, absolutely. So I think it was a few months later. Um, I, I got the audition again for Zoe and I remember doing the audition for her and the audition scene was saving joy from the wall. That was my audition scene. And I remember I was coming home from, I think, set, one of the other projects I was working on, and I was exhausted. I was exhausted, and I was so tired, and my face was puffy, and it was just one of those, I have to get the tape out. This is the best that I can do. I'm just going to, like, close my eyes and click send. And <laughs> it, it was one of those, if it's meant to be, it's meant to be. Yeah. Trust the process. Trust mm -hmm. the universe. And luckily I got the call and then we started shooting in November. So I, I think it was all cosmically aligned. It was meant to be. <laughs> right. that, that's crazy to kind of think about that, how you went in for one thing and then they kind of saw something else in you. Um, and obviously I know for the industry, it must, must be hard to kind of be like, okay, I'll wait and kind of see what happens. But it was good that you were busy with other projects. And then, you know, obviously this, this worked out and now here you are and uh, everybody's stoked for your character, obviously. Um, and people who might not be familiar with your character, um, you know, on Good Witch, can you kind of tell us a bit about Zoe and how you would maybe describe her to a stranger? Ranger. Yeah. So Zoe Taylor, she is a firefighter in Middleton. She's the newest member of Middleton, I would say. Um, she, I'm not sure how long she's been living there. I would say maybe six months or so. And she moved to Middleton because her girlfriend died, unfortunately, in the line of duty. And she just really needed a fresh start. And she packed up her things and moved to Middleton. She didn't know a single soul and happened to meet Joy Harper on a work call. And they have been, you know, getting to know each other ever since. And Zoe is really brave. She's really strong and she's really honest, I would say. And she's just really trying to find a home here and, and get grounded and heal her heart a little bit. Yeah, she's been through 
through the ringer, that's for sure. And, you know, have you found any common ground playing Zoe? Like, does she embody any similarities or differences to your personality in real life that you, that have really stuck out to you? Zoe and I are quite different, I would say, in that Zoe is very adventurous. She loves to go rock climbing and she's getting her pilot's license and she's super active and you know, she's the type who would want to travel around the world. Mm -hmm. And I'm more the type of, I want to lie on a beach with a good book and just relax and take a nap. (laughs) Don't we all? (laughs) all? But I think that's the really fun thing about acting and getting to play different characters is because when I have to play myself, it's just, it's kind of boring. It's it's Mm -hmm. easy. It's what I know. So getting to really step into the shoes of somebody else who has this really beautiful complex history and backstory and get to play that adventurous you know adrenaline seeking type of character is really fun Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah it's it's good like it's more challenging to be somebody that obviously you're not you don't want to be kind of yourself for every single project you do because obviously that does get boring I can imagine feel like acting (laughs) right yeah no (laughs) I'm coming to to set I'm being myself um and obviously it's fresh in our minds uh you know Joy and Zoe had their first date uh last night Mm -hmm. it was the gift that kept giving you know it's always awesome when things are going so well that you just don't want it to end and you want to keep like figuring out things that you could do together uh so you don't have to say goodbye obviously without spoiling anything because there's you know much more to come um can you kind of tease the audience with what's, you know, what might be on the horizon for your character for the rest of the season? Hmm. Well, what I can say is Joy and Zoe's relationship, we, there's a lot of ebbs and flows Mm -hmm. and we end up facing a few obstacles that we have to really tackle head on. And it requires a lot of honesty with each other and with ourselves and what we are prepared to take on. Um, So there's a lot coming and it's really juicy. It's really like something you just want to like bite into. And I think the fans are going to be so, so satisfied and so happy because it's just so real. It's so authentic and it makes you just want to keep watching. That's awesome. And we're, we're going to go all Miss Congeniality for a second. And, you know, what would you say is your go-to activity for a date night? Food is very important to me. Mm-hmm. Um, I love sushi. I don't know that sushi is very date. We're like, it, I don't know that it's very like aesthetic to eat sushi on a date because it's just full of mouths. It's hard to talk, <laughs> but I love sushi. Um, I like a date, especially for a first date. I don't want to do anything like the movies. I don't want to sit in silence with somebody. I want to get to know them. So anything that's interactive. So maybe we go to a museum or an art show, or we just even just walk around a mall or something, something where we can interact. And then there's other stimuli that if the conversation isn't so great, we can kind of, there's a lot of other things to pick and choose from. (laughs) But I want to get to know you. And that's the whole point, right? If we just sit there and watch a movie, like I can do that by myself. <laughs> <laughs> and that's always cool. Cause I, I always usually say like, if you are going on a date, either go one way or the other, either be like, you know, super proper or uh, I I'm very big into like ramen. So I would take somebody say wow. on like a ramen date and be like, Hey, slurping is encouraged. Like you kind of <laughs> get to know somebody and that way you're both in the same situation of like, yeah, this is not the most attractive thing, but we're just like, you know, we're still here. We're talking, we're, we're kind of getting through this. Uh, so I definitely think that it's better to have moments where you can, you know, talk to somebody, connect with somebody and like kind of show a little bit of, you know, the flaws because that's going to come out eventually anyways. <laughs> exactly. And nothing too fancy because then yeah, it's, it's, mm, it's a little too yeah <laughs> one-to-one. I don't know. <laughs> It's kind of awkward. Everybody's looking at you when you're like in a candle at dinner or something like that, but uh, definitely getting down and dirty. That's good. Um, and obviously you, you mentioned Zoe has, you know, been through difficult times um, just when it comes to relationships, she's, you know, been through this traumatic experience with her ex. And, you know, when we first met her, it seemed she was kind of hesitant at first uh, to kind of warm up to joy. And, you know, eventually that, you know, did progress. Um, you know, do you think that the bow tie moment was what solidified that for her for kind of the the progression or, you know, what was the point where she decided, Hey, let's, let me see where this goes. It was definitely the bow tie moment. Mm -hmm. And I think that her, the, the next line after that was, do you want to paint a canoe together? And I feel like that was such a big 
moment. And that was a big change because that was her and her exes or not ex her, yeah. you know, recently her same. and um, yeah, her, her past partners project together. So then bringing on a new potential love interest, that's a big step. Um, so I think that, and the other thing that was really special about the bow tie moment was that was also Zoe's first glimpse into the magic of Middleton mm -hmm. and all that it has to give. Um, so I think that there was, there was something about that, that like, oh, is this, what does this mean? I'm going to take it as a sign. Joy said to look for a sign and I guess this is it. So I think that she's kind of like going with the flow and she's like, all right, this seems like what I'm supposed to do. So I'm going to do it and hope that it works out. Right. And that's where the bravery comes in. Yeah. She's got to put herself out there. And, you know, unfortunately in any type of situation, you have to put yourself out there and hope for the best. Uh, and if it doesn't work out, it doesn't, but at least you have that experience for, you know, the time being. Exactly. And obviously uh, you guys are making some waves, uh, you know, on Hallmark and just in general. Um, it's very hard to kind of see diversity and representation on screen. Um, you know, you'd think in 2021, you know, the entertainment we see would be more reflective of the world. Um, unfortunately, that's, you know, not the case for, for everything. Um, and some members of the community, you know, were or are reluctant to kind of watch, you know, Hallmark just due to the lack of re representation in the past, um, you know, has the weight of that responsibility, you know, taking on this role and this, you know, this pivotal moment kind of in, in that history um, and, you know, the ceilings that you guys are breaking together, um, you know, has that sunk in with, with kind of this on-screen romance that is slowly unfolding? I think that I understood, I understood the weight of the responsibility that we were taking on uh, going into this role. It's still it's still settling in for me. Mm -hmm. And there's really both sides, right? I mean, there's so much love on Twitter. There's so much excitement. And that's something that I'm still processing. And I really am not even paying attention to the rest of it yeah. because it's not important. But as for viewers who are reluctant to, to get on board because they're, there's you know some trust issues, I understand. I do. And I think that if they take the chance to watch the show, watch the season and see what we've done with it, I think that they will feel really good and really satisfied. And if not for the network, then for the story and for the people that it is positively impacting. Yes. Um, even just looking at it like in a microscope. Um, I feel so solid and so confident in the work that we put in to make this the best representation and the best story that it could be that if they trust us, please come along for the journey. You will not be disappointed. Right. And I a hundred percent agree. I mean, I've covered, you know, Winona Earp since the beginning and have had many conversations with Kat, you know, over the years kind of regarding her character on that show. Um, so I have no doubt that, you know, she knows how important it is to kind of get things right when it comes to the LGBT plus community um, and kind of bring you along for the ride, knowing that, you know, these, you know, passionate fans who are following you wherever you go kind of thing um, are going to trust in you that things are going to go well since, you know, historically things just don't go well for these types of characters on screen. But I definitely think that people will be pleased and they should put the trust in you guys because you wouldn't do it if you didn't think it was going to pan out. In a yes, and I way. mean, I couldn't have a better partner in this going into this with this type of role and this type of responsibility than Kat, mm -hmm. because she, she's been through it before mm -hmm. and it's just, it's really good to have somebody on your side who you can trust, who you can go to. And, um, I really feel like this just could not have worked out any more perfectly. Right. You've got a perfect onboarding partner uh, for something like this, especially with the good Erpers. You've got that built in fandom now, um, you know, coming along for the ride. And I know uh, I had seen in other interviews that uh, you had mentioned that Kat gave you a heads up and I'm sure you didn't, you know, realize the magnitude of the fandom <laughs> and the passion behind everybody. And obviously there's good and bad with any type of fandom, just, uh, you know, that's how it is. Um, but, you know, now that you've kind of settled in for a couple of weeks, uh, how are you dealing with it? Are your notifications blowing up? Do you have to mute things? Like what's, what's kind of going on in the social media part of the world? <laughs> it's listen, it's definitely a new, a new journey for me. Mm -hmm. Um, 
<laughs> so far it's it's been really great the, the only problem that i have is that it's because the notifications keep coming in it's really hard for me to, to log off mm -hmm. because you know you post something and all of a sudden all the likes start coming in and people are commenting and i want to talk to everybody and then oh it's three hours later you know <laughs> last night we were live tweeting and now it's 11 30 12 at night and i'm like i gotta go to bed <laughs> It's, it's like you want to just keep the conversation going but unfortunately there's a moment where you're like okay I got to step away and come back to this later yes. and you know I just I I'm doing my best right now to just try and respond to as many people as I can acknowledge as many things that I can I don't want anybody to feel like they're getting ignored or I don't see their things so for now I think I have it under control in a couple of weeks ask me again <laughs> yeah <laughs> it'll slowly build. But I think if you have like that set time of like, Hey, I'm going to answer between this time and this time, and then come back to it. Like, obviously you have other things you have to do a life to live and jobs to have. So you can't kind of spend your whole time on uh, Twitter, but it's good that uh, people are being positive overall, hopefully. And, and you're getting that good feedback uh, from the role. Definitely. I'm so grateful for all of, all of the fans. <laughs> um, and then obviously uh, the show centers around magic, you know, magical gifts, that kind of stuff. Um, you know, if you could have any type of magical gift or power, what would it be? If I could have a magic power, it would be teleportation because I really don't like traveling. Mm -mm. I don't like the process of traveling or traffic, um, is awful. <laughs> or, traffic or any of that commute life. I just want to be there. And also it would just save me so much time. I could sleep in later mm -hmm. because I don't have to, I have to, because I don't have to account for any of that. Yeah. Um, it would make my life a thousand times easier. So <laughs> I hope that I'm living in, in the lifetime that that can happen. It would be a nice thing. So hopefully in this lifetime, we get, we get something like that. <laughs> I'd love to go to Hawaii. That would be great. Do I want to be on a 12 hour flight? Not so much. Not so much. <laughs> Um, and I took some questions from Twitter because obviously there was a lot that came in. So I tried yeah. to, you know, get a little bit of everything, but we'd be here for hours if we took all the questions. <laughs> um, this question is from Kayla. Uh, she says, uh, Joy and Zoe met in a serendipitous way. Um, you know, have you ever had a real life meet cue? Sadly, no. Uh, yeah, me neither. <laughs> I, I wonder how many people actually have. I feel like in the day and age that we're in with technology, I feel like it's getting rarer and rarer because we meet everybody online yeah. and we're so connected to everybody already. So having an accidental serendipitous meeting, it's very magical. I wish, but no. <laughs> this question is from Natalie. Uh, what was your favorite show growing up? Ooh, um, depends on the era, but I'm going to say Grey's Anatomy. I know that it's still going on. Um, Are but you up I, to date with it? That's the question. I'm not. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm not up to date because what happens is when you have a show that has so many episodes and so many seasons, once you get behind, it's really hard to catch up. And I'm not the type of person who can skip episodes to just start at the new season. I have to pick up where I left off. I don't remember where I left off. <laughs> so basically you have to start from the beginning, which is going to take a very long time to get a lifetime. <laughs> but I remember in high school, I had, um, three, the first three seasons on DVD, the like special edition. Remember DVDs? <laughs> oh yeah. I have some somewhere. <laughs> somewhere. Do we have a DVD player to play it? Probably not. <laughs> um, but yes, I absolutely loved that show. I'm still convinced I could do open heart surgery just from all of the episodes I watched. We all are doctors after in an elevator <laughs> if I needed to. I'm prepared. This question is from Megan. Uh, what color do you believe represents Zoe's aura? Ooh, that is a really great question. The color that's immediately coming to my mind is teal. Ooh. I don't know why. That's just the color that popped in my head. I like that. That's what I'm going with, teal. All right, we'll take Teal. And I like to incorporate my signature question into all of my interviews. So if you're ready, we could, uh, I'll shoot it at you. I'm ready. All right. Uh, so if you were to construct a donut based on Zoe's personality on Goodwitch, what kind of donut would it be? And what toppings would be on it? What a lovely question. <laughs> okay. It would be a cake donut. Um, 
Hmm. Okay. So I say it's a cake donut because she's, she's very like hearty, not like the fluffy soft donuts. She's got some, some weight to her Mm -hmm. for the topping, a glaze for sure for sweetness. And okay. Go with me here. Cinnamon hearts. Ooh. Which I don't think is a donut that exists. Probably not, no. But cinnamon hearts, because they're a little spicy. They have a little heat. Yeah. She's a firefighter. Right. <laughs> and um, yeah, yeah, I like that. I want to try that donut, actually. Right? That sounds really good. Well, we, we could try it. I know uh, somebody in the past had said uh, hot, a hot Cheetos donut. So I actually made it, which was not great, but it wasn't mm-hmm. terrible. Um, but we can maybe make this and we'll put it out on Twitter and see if people will try it with us. Yeah. Yeah. I would be very interested in, in seeing how that, how that lands with people. Yeah. We're going to, we're going to do this. Um, and now if you weren't acting, what other profession would you be doing right now? Ooh, I would be in fashion. I, I actually went to school for it. I have a degree in fashion marketing and merchandising, So I like to think that I would have my own clothing line or if not, then I would have a store that curates brands. Yeah. I worked in retail for a long time. I really like it. I'm really good at it. And um, I love working with clients and and dressing them and yeah, definitely be in fashion in some, some sense of the word. Ooh, that's amazing. Mm -hmm. Um, and now what are three random facts about you that the audience doesn't know? Okay. I have been to, I think nine schools in my life, save for like college and university. I've been to a lot of different schools. Um, because we moved around a lot as a kid. A uh, fun fact. Um, I have a, we we're talking about this yesterday with my, with my brother. I have a nightly ritual and I have done it for as long as I can remember and I never miss a night. One, I have to lotion my feet. I will not go, I will not go into bed with dry sheet, like with dry feet. Dry in the, feet. It doesn't feel nice to me. No. So I moisturize my feet. I have my lip balm next to me and I need a full glass of water not half, not three quarters. It needs to be full so that when I wake up in the morning, I have water there. Mm. Yep. I'll say this is my third one. The third is I have dessert after every meal. Mm. What's, what's your go-to I have a sugar problem. <laughs> <laughs> something sweet. I just feel like I need to finish the meal off with something sweet or else it doesn't feel complete to me. So it's, it could be anything. I'm not picky, but I do love chocolate. Okay. Like dark chocolate, milk chocolate. Milk chocolate for sure. Okay, good. Cause dark chocolate. Not so much. And now if you had a magic wand, what show would you do next? Oh, oh, I would love to be on the show. Good girls. I love that show. That's a great show. They are so cool. Um, I love the dynamic. I don't know where I would fit in there. Maybe I could be like the new neighbor that moves in and I don't know, but I love that show. I would love to be on a show like it. Um, also something CW-esque, like a Riverdale, like a, like a teen dark drama. That's, that's my, like, I love those kind of shows. Right. So if I could be in one, that would be like a dream come true. Are you watching anything on the CW right now or no? I, not at the moment, not at the moment. I'm still catching up on a lot of shows. Yeah. It's getting to be a lot. Um, and I know that everybody is asking, do I watch my Nona Earp? I know that's that's the question. I wasn't going to ask you, but you brought it up. So we'll talk about it. (laughs) The people want to know. Yes. Um, I have watched the first episode. Okay. It's I'm, it's on my list. (laughs) I'm getting there. I, at this point, I can't not watch it. Or I think I will have an angry mob coming for me. So I promise I've, I've, I've put it, I've watched the first episode. So like I've, I've watched there. it, I can say that. Um, I will, I will try and finish by the end of the summer. I will have at least like 
one to two seasons down. That's a valid commitment, I think. So we'll I'm doing my best. People, they could calm down. It's in the process. We're we're gonna go. <laughs> we're good to go. Obviously, it's hard, you know, coming, you know, the the good herbers are obviously coming from that show and they're coming over here and it's just mixed emotions. So everybody wants to know everything. But uh <laughs> hopefully everybody's nice to you because it's two oh, different shows and obviously different things are happening. So mm-hmm. uh we want to embrace everybody. We don't want to scare people away. Um <laughs> And obviously we're focused on the remaining episodes of Good Witch, uh, you know, what's coming up for your character, for Joy, that kind of stuff. But, um, you know, what other projects are you working on or is anything you could tell us that we could look out for since, uh, you know, the Good Herbers are going to be following you for life now. So tell us, tell us where we can find you. <laughs> well, I think I have two Christmas movies coming out. Um, one is called A Sisterly Christmas. That's what it's currently called. And that was really fun to work on. That's going to be on the OWN network. Okay. It was like an all black cast, really, really fun time. And there's another one that I think is coming out this Christmas. Um, And it's called Enchanted Christmas Cake. Mm -hmm. So fingers crossed. I haven't heard it, but it didn't come out last Christmas. So it's got to be this one. Um, So those are the two things I have on the docket right now. And... Yeah. Otherwise you can keep up with me on Instagram and on Twitter. That's where I'm at these days. Responding to all your messages. And the live tweeting is my favorite part of the week. And now do you get to like, do you get to like have the episodes ahead of time so you can like plan out your live tweeting or you're just watching it live with everybody else? I'm generally watching it live now that um, we're a week behind in Canada now Mm -hmm. on the W network. So I've been watching the screeners that the network sends. I do not watch them before. I want to have the like fresh (laughs) the fresh I'm watching it with everybody else experience um it's just a little bit hard because we don't have commercial breaks in it yeah so I'm when you get that that tweet that is like blah 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 and everybody's like that didn't happen yet I'm like stop you're spoiling it (laughs) so I always like I take really long breaks so I'm I'm usually I usually actually finish the episode a few minutes after just for just for safety yeah um but yeah, I don't, I don't pre-watch the episodes, even though I would love to, I got, you know, if the fans have to wait, so do I. Yeah, it's good. It, it brings a different kind of experience and kind of a connection and bonding that you can do and be like, Hey, I didn't know they were going to piece this together that way. Or, uh, however it kind of flows. It's, it's nice to just experience it in the moment with everybody. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think those were all the questions I had. Um, I do appreciate you taking the time to talk with me. And if there's anything else you want to add, you could say to the fans now, if not, then I think we are ready to go. Uh, just thank you. A big, from the bottom of my heart, thank you to the fans because we can't do this without people watching. Right. And so you are what keeps the numbers up. You are what makes it special. And yeah, we, we need you. So thank you so much for the support and for the love and we won't let you down. That's amazing. I appreciate that. They appreciate that. Uh, If more people watch and there's more positive feedback for storylines like this, hopefully that means there will be more of these types of storylines. We really want to make sure that people are represented and we appreciate you uh, being that face and and taking on uh, this very heavy weight of the world that uh, everybody's looking for themselves in, in, you know, a show, but we do appreciate you guys coming along for the ride and we can't wait to see what's coming up. Yay! (laughs) So thank you again. I think that is all I have for you today. Amazing. Thank you so much. You're welcome. chatting with you. I know. So nice. It's nice to actually like have a conversation and uh, be able to follow up and kind of get your insights since I know it's probably been a crazy ride. Best ride (laughs) of my life. Right? Here we go. <laughs> stay, stay on it. Hopefully we have you for a very long time. If not, we'll be following you uh, to your next projects and keep us posted on where you'll be. Will do. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. And you enjoy your day. Okay. You too. Take care.